Hello and welcome. In this video, we will review how to use the functionality of audit templates to capture tracking numbers on the handheld mobile devices during sales order shipping process. Audit templates have existed in the system for a while now. So this is just expanding on the use cases of such functionality. So let's take a look. So the first thing we'll, we'll need to decide is which menu item will be used to enter this tracking number. If you navigate to the list of all the menu items, you may notice that audit template ID field will be available to any menu item that is using mode work and use existing work set to yes. So that means any existing warehouse work can have an audit template assigned. So in our scenario, we are thinking about picking the materials and putting them into the stage area. And then other person from warehouse will be taking it from the stage area and putting it into truck. So that will be that loading process. The shipments will actually be scheduled and the tracking number information will be provided by the carriers. So that's a menu item that we plan to use to capture a tracking number on the handheld device right after the sales loading has been completed. Now, let's take a closer look at the audit template itself. First thing you'll need to decide on which field will trigger template. You have to think about how your picking process or loading process is configured. In our case, we group by the sales order number. So we expect user to scan or enter sales order number. And that will be the field that we will use to trigger our audit template. So we'll select the order number. But if you, for example, pick by license plate or enter work IDs, pick an appropriate field from here. Because if that field is not going to be entered, the audit template will not be activated. And then you have to decide which action to that trigger field will activate the template. We have three options prior of entering a sales order number. The second option is completion and a third status change. In our case, we will be entering the completion. So when we complete loading process, then there is this uh, text field that will show up next to the sales order number. And final is what is expected to happen when this audit template is used. Well, we have multiple options. One is capture data. As the name implies, the user would be expected to either enter or scan value. And in order to aid them, we will label it with a specific name. In our case, we will prompt a user for tracking number and expect them to enter that tracking number. The second option is display. For informational purposes, display text. So I just decided to add a thank you after the tracking number has been provided. Then you have print. And if you select that option, so let's just take a look, you will then be prompted to select the report name. So those are the standard templates that you can create using either electronic reporting or in SSRS. That's a report that you choose to print when this audit template is activated. And then I think the most interesting one is the event. When you select event, the event field becomes available. And right now there is only one event that is there. It's shipping confirmed. So the blog that I've read from Microsoft is that when the load ID changes status, this template will be activated and it will then go and confirm a shipment. So instead of doing it manually, you can rely on the status change of a load. For example, load changes from in process to loaded. That means the picking work has been completed. That will trigger this audit template and will then go and confirm that shipment, effectively changing the status of that load to shipped. And I think the last option here is a custom. So if you have any custom methods that you have defined, you can specify them right here. So let me delete this one. So this is a template we plan to use. When we enter a sales order number at the completion of our operation, we expect to capture tracking order number in the first step and then display thank you note in the second step. So with that in place, let's test it. So right now I'm in my warehousing app interface. I will go to my sales order loading. In here, I will enter my sales order number. That's so all one, two, three, four, five. Enter. Then I will be prompted to confirm the information about the pick. So the item, the quantity, location, etc. So I'm just going to click on yes. Then I have to confirm the put information. So location, ship, quantity, and the item. So I'll confirm that. Click on OK. And now this is our first audit template screen tracking number prompt right here. And you can see it's asking me for the tracking number for the sales order one, two, three, four, five. So in here, I will enter my tracking details. So for example, tracking 100, 200, 300. 
100. Click on OK. And then this is a second display screen of my audit template displaying me a thank you message right here. So I'm just going to click on OK. And that will complete sales loading process. Now, in order to review the data that we just have captured, we have to navigate to an inquiry screen in the warehouse management module. Go in here under inquiries and reports, we see work audit data capture. And if you look at the last one right here, we see a tracking number and that was against that sales order one, two, three, four, five. And of course, it's very easy from this point on to build any custom or Power BI reports that will combine a sales order number together with a tracking order number that was captured when that sales order was loaded. So that was the process. As mentioned in various articles about audit templates, its functionality can be used to extend the number of fields that are available for viewing and capture on warehousing app interface without ever customizing it. There are many more use cases that you can think of that can use functionality of audit templates. I hope you found this video useful. Until the next time, take care.